What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Tea. My name is Carrie, and today is another wrap-up video. Yes, it is, where we're gonna wander on into the filming studio, AKA my bedroom. I'm too broke for a studio. <laughs> um, so I read a lot of books this month. Yes, I did. And <clears throat> I choked on my spit too. And I also uh, had quite an adventure with some fountain pens this month as well. Uh, so that is also really exciting. Um, I'm about to put you on my tripod. <laughs> we do nothing but just prime time network stuff here. Uh, don't cover the camera. Uh, so yeah, I read a ton of stuff, like crazy amount of stuff, ton of fountain pen, good stuff. Uh, in fact, the fountain pen and ink that I used, <laughs> I bought a whole new bottle of. Yes, I did. But I read a ton, so I'm gonna get into it because this is going to be a bit of a longer video. But I read a lot. So much so that it just shook the camera trying to pick it all up. Uh, so spoilers for two of them. So I'm gonna start with the two big baddies. The two that make the camera shake. <laughs> and that is both J.R.R. Tolkien's uh, The Two Towers and Return of the King. Uh, these are the second and third books in the Lord of the Rings series. Obviously, the initial thing was intended to be one book, uh, and these actually do break it down into the six, like book six, book five, book four, that's encompassed in the one main chunk. Um, but of course, broken into two separate. So the. Lord of the Rings Two Towers begins with the departure of Boromir um, and then goes right to the end. Uh, the books and the movies take a fairly even split. Um, the first movie is the first book, second movie is the second book, third movie, third book, so on and so forth. Obviously there are liberties taken within and I will say this causes me some heartbreak having finished these books. Um, because the series is just so sweet. Um, I think there is no better humanity than Samwise Gamgee. He's just the best of the best, sir. Uh, in fact, I think actually my least favorite character of the protagonists anyways uh, is Frodo <laughs> uh, in the books and the movies, to be honest. Um, one thing that I found very interesting reading through these again uh, was because it's been since 2015 since I read the books, um, I forgot how it ended in the book. <laughs> so the very, very ending and the very, very ending of the movie versus book are the same. Yes, okay. The, you know, elves and, and whatnot, they do sail off to the havens, um, but I forgot the disarray of the Shire when the four hobbits return. Um, and I forgot that, I mean, this is gonna sound bad, <laughs> but I forgot that Saruman didn't die <clears throat> in the tower um, like he did in the movie. He, he, well, he doesn't die until the very end of the book in the Shire, in Frodo's home. Um, so that was really interesting to read. I really enjoyed that chapter. I feel like that chapter, I understand why they left it out of the book, um, but I feel like it gives you so much more meat and, and, and the ability to be proud of the hobbits for coming together and banding on their own. Uh, in fact, Gandalf says like, look, the Shire is messed up and I'm not here to help you. I'm leaving now. My job is done. Figure it out. Um, and I appreciate that. I like the fact that they did. Um, it gave Mary and Pippin something to do and be proud of. Uh, you know, yes, okay, they did a ton throughout the actual story. <laughs> you know, especially like Mary and Pippin having like two moments where like if they didn't do what they were supposed to do then it probably couldn't have ended the way that it did but they constantly were searching for more to, to prove their worth uh, and that 
gave it to them, fighting for their home, ultimately on home turf. So I really liked that. Um, I, I forgot all about that. In fact, I, I just finished the, the Return of the King a couple hours before filming this uh, while I was in the bath. Because <laughs> yes, I read in the bath. I love it. Um, is it dangerous? Eh, potentially, but I've been doing it for years and haven't dropped a book so far. So we will see. Um, so those two, I'm, I'm finished now. I'm officially finished reading The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings again. The Two Towers, I didn't read in its entirety in January. I did start it in December, um, but I finished it in January. Um, so, but yeah, the every other book I did the entirety in the month. Um, so those two, if you haven't read The Hobbit or Lord of the Rings yet, what are you doing? Good grief. Um, I'm gonna jump into the Cimmerillion. I'm gonna take a bit of a break from Middle Earth uh, for a little bit. Um, so maybe in a few months I will return to it, but highly, highly, highly recommend. 10 out of 10. I think it should be uh, forced reading. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I think it's important enough that you should read it throughout school, um, but I also don't want to force people to read it because then it's not as enjoyable. Um, but anyways, I read another book in the Wheel of Time series. This is the second book in the Wheel of Time series by Robert Jordan. It's called The Great Hunt. Um, I dominated this book. I think I read it in like three days, which for me is very, very fast. Um, this one's not as big as the first one. It is, um, get out of the glossary here. I think it's 600 and something pages. Uh, oops. 680 pages. The other one was like 818 or something like that. Um, I liked this book uh, a lot. I actually, I liked it better than the first one. Um, the first one, while it will always hold a special place in my heart because it's obviously the beginning, it's where you get introduced to everybody. I feel like this one, you really got to flesh out some of the characters. Um, Nynaeve, if you remember me talking about her in the first, or in December's, uh, wrap up when I read the first book. Nynaeve was my least favorite character out of the main core. Um, and Moraine was my favorite. Uh, in this book, Moraine's still my favorite, although she does not serve much of a purpose in this book. She's not in it a whole lot. Um, Nynaeve redeemed herself a little bit. She's still not close to my favorite. <laughs> um, but she definitely served more of a purpose in here. She bugged me a lot less. Uh, she did kind of step into her own. I would have liked to see her do more. Um, there, without getting into spoilers, uh, Nynaeve and a character that was not, well, sort of introduced in book one. Um, her name's Elaine. I guess it doesn't really give much away. Uh, have to rescue Egwene. I'll say that. I won't tell you how or why. Um, and that really gave her the ability to kind of like step up and, you know, be a little bit more assertive um, and less of a, an itch, <laughs> shall I say, which is the vibe that I got from book one. Um, Rand is Rand. He's fine. Um, he had some shining moments where I absolutely adored his character and he just whined a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's be real. Um, but then again, in Lord of the Rings, Frodo whines a lot too, so you know. Uh, Matt is probably still one of my favorite characters. Uh, he definitely is just so funny and, and clever. Uh, I liked his character a lot. Perrin uh, embraced himself a little bit more, um, which I, I kind of I liked. Um, what I, I, think, I think what I appreciate about this one is it got less away from like the introductory and more character build. This was a very heavy character build. Yes, The Great Hunt, the whole book was surrounded upon one really major plot point. Um, and I mean, if you've seen the show, um, then you know a horn, I won't tell you what kind, but a horn was stolen differently than how it happened in the book, but essentially the same thing. Um, and they had to get it back uh, as well as a certain dagger. Um, it's really hard to talk about this book without giving away spoilers, but I did 
feel like some of it could have been trimmed um a couple times I'm like would you just already but it got there <laughs> it definitely got there um I liked this book a lot more than book one um I felt like this ended really well as well um whereas book one I wasn't a super huge fan I mean I wasn't mad at the ending of book one but I wasn't a super huge fan of it um, I felt like it didn't really know ultimately where it was going almost, um, but this certainly did. I'm excited to read the third one um, this upcoming February, which is called The Dragon Reborn. Um, I hope to see a few more characters. I want Moraine to play more of a role in that book, um, especially based on where this one kind of ended. I am fully aware what happens with Moraine uh, as her entire character arc that was spoiled to me so there's that um, but 10 out of 10 also recommend uh, even more than the first one um, all of those were dynamite um, and this year or this year this month was very much a well series month apparently I did not read any standalone so I finished Lord of the Rings a trilogy plus The Hobbit uh, book two of uh, Wheel of Time, which is one of 15 if you count the prequel. And then uh, I read two books. One of them is a, a novella, but I read two books uh, that was penned by a fellow YouTuber. Many of you uh, in the book world probably already know who that is, uh, Daniel Green. He has a phenomenal uh, YouTube channel and I basically thought, okay, I will buy his books, sort of support him that way. Um, of course, I've like binged all of his content because he's hilarious um, and I, I like it quite a bit. Uh, so his Breach of Peace was his novella and Rebel's Creed uh, is technically the second book in this series, but really I feel like Breach of Peace um, is just simply setting up this like this really is the first book in my mind and this was just sort of all of the the, the crap to set up this like the, it's the prologue essentially that's what this feels like is it's a prologue because when I read this book I kind of felt like you know where's it going like it almost seemed like I don't know it's this I have a feeling of it's not bad but it's not great <laughs> That's sort of where uh, I, I'm ending at. So basically the, the plot without really giving away any spoilers um, is that you get very much a Sherlock Holmes vibe mixed with <sighs> fantasy elements, essentially. This was much more Sherlock vibe than this. I mean, the character Chapman was basically, I swear, Sherlock, um, but yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll read the, the synopsis here that was written by Evan Winter, who's another uh, really intense um, author. Uh, Existing in a world that feels like it's been clawed from the cruelest corners of Abercrombie's first law series, which I haven't read yet, but I've heard great things. Oops. Uh, Green's novella blends fantasy, mystery, and horror in a stunningly unique fusion of the works of Arthur Conan Doyle and Stephen King. From page one, we're pulled into the book's universe by the puzzle of a gruesome whodunit, and through the crime is overseen by a cast of compellingly competent characters. Genius is a little match for the speed and force of what's coming. Indeed, the book's propulsive pace careens onward until it slams up against a finish as powerful as action and catharsis from Alien's final showdown. And at a time when even the best fiction struggles to outrun the madness of reality, Breach of Peace is everything I could ever want from a novella and more. Um, so yeah, you do, the book opens up uh, at a crime scene. Brutal, brutal crime scene. <laughs> Daniel is not afraid to uh, embrace a little bit of uh, grimdark uh, fantasy. This opens up even more brutal than this one. <laughs> like this made me almost want to vomit. Um, and, uh, yeah, so you kind of figure out what happens. This whole book really finds out what happens with the family that essentially gets murdered. Um, and then this book deals with the fallout of what happened in this one, uh, when you realize why and how that family got murdered. And then this one comes in. <laughs> 
This one comes in, like I said, the opening, like, sorry, my watch went off. The opening chapter of this basically made me want to vomit. Um, I will say Daniel's not afraid to kill off characters because damn. Um, the main character from this one, Khalid, uh, is sort of in this book. <laughs> um, and Chapman, uh, I really like Chapman's character. He's not in this really, which is sad. <laughs> um, but you do get some other characters that you can hold on to. Holden is just amazing. He is definitely my favorite character. Um, and one of the other characters uh which i don't really know how i should talk about uh like recce i really like um but i think it's avi a a v i um she's actually one of my favorite characters even though she's supposed to be a bad guy <laughs> but i really like her um so this one is definitely uh meatier than than this um i almost didn't get this after here because i this was just kind of it it seemed, with the exception of the fact that it was really dark, this seemed a little YA to me, but this is certainly not. Um, the writing style is a little basic. I would, I do wish for a little more panache, um, but the story itself is is good, and I like that. Um, the The writing is really big, and I don't like the feel of this book. It has like that, like I want to say, like almost like velvety feel. Um, this one has it a little bit too, but I don't know. This one, it took me a while to get used to it. Um, it's a very easy read, but enjoyable read. Um, I wouldn't say that it is a 10 out of 10, but I would say it's a solid eight. Um, yeah. It got better as it went on. Like I said, it took me a while to get past the opening. I was not anticipating that, uh, which is good, but also like, damn. <laughs> So certainly read a lot there. This is a very long video, guys. I'm so sorry. Um, like I said, I read five and I got a lot to say. Um, I wish I could even say more, but this is not a booktube channel. Um, so uh, if, if that ever turns into one, I don't know. I'll flush it out a little bit more. But let me stop talking for the most part and get into the pen and ink combo um, because chef's kiss. Okay, so I filmed this entire thing, and for whatever reason, my camera just ate it. Um, so I'm gonna kinda quickly go back over everything I just did. <laughs> That's obnoxious. Um, so yeah, my favorite pairing this month is the Leonardo Memento Zero Perugna uh, with the rose gold trim. Uh, it's a steel extra fine nib, and the ink is Diamine Rider Blood. I got this pen from Emmy at Pen Venture. Um, so as I was explaining down here while I was showing it to you guys, um, I had this tuned to be pretty wet, um, which I love. Uh, it's very, very smooth. It's sort of like you get that extra fine feel, um, but it, it's super, super smooth. Um, there's really not any flexibility with this nib. It's very, very stiff, but it's very smooth. It's very responsive. Uh, absolutely a dream writer emmy tuned this thing to perfection um never any hard starts no skipping no nothing uh, i've put many a different ink into this pen and i've always had a great experience um, but this i think has to be my favorite um, i've gone through all four milliliters of my sample and this is all i have left um, and i was saying how Normally I do all of the book talk before I film the pen part, um, but I'm doing this out of order. I want to do the pen first because I'm probably going to run out of ink soon and I don't want to leave you all high and dry. Um, I really like this ink. I like how it changes depending on the pen that it's in um, for how it shades. I like that it changes depending on the paper that it's on for the color that actually gets displayed. Um, I really like it quite a bit. and. Uh, tomorrow um, I will actually be placing an order with Goulet pens which you guys will see the unboxing soon it's gonna be a decently sized order for me uh, and within it is going to contain a bottle of this ink because I'm obsessed with it I love it uh, it is perfect for this pen um, and I think this will be my main stay now uh, I like it so 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 very much um, so guys, thank you for watching this video. Uh, if you like this 
video, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. Regular content comes out every Monday and Friday, and then this series uh, on Tuesdays. And if you're still watching this far in, you are the reason that I will make these videos. Check out my Patreon, uh, link will be in the description below. Any support would be insanely appreciated. My space heater just clicked on, so that is perfect timing to see. I will see you next time. Bye.